Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Martin Young. Thank you, sir. And thank you, everyone, for taking time to, uh, to join my session about building the ultimate issue tracker. Um, I'm sure it's been a very late day for you. Uh, it's Friday. It's well past most people's uh, uh, end of workday. So uh, truly, thank you so much for taking time out. Um, this is my second time coming to the, uh, the M365 Chicago event, and I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, last year, I spent a lot of time talking about SharePoint and List. This time, I'm going to talk about Teams, List, and Power Automate, and how we can use Power Automate and Teams to extend some of the functionality that we get with Microsoft Lists. My name is Norm Young. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP coming to you from sunny St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. Uh, you may not know where St. Catharines is, and that's fine. If I look out my window in my office, uh, I can see some of the mist coming up from Niagara Falls. If I look over my shoulder, I can see the skyline of Toronto across Lake Ontario, so I'm kind of in between places. And so uh, as much as I don't like uh, COVID and lockdowns, it is uh, an absolute uh, treat and pleasure to, to meet you all virtually. So without further ado, um, please join us uh, and supporting the Chicago Public Schools through the Children's First Fund. You can use the URL or the uh, the, the bit.ly code, uh, scan code, excuse me, to, to find out more information. Big thanks out to all of our sponsors. Without them, these events are not possible. So thank you, truly. So what I want to do is to show how we can extend functionality in uh, Microsoft Lists with something that is delivered to us. So Microsoft Lists is a, uh, uh, you know, it's been around for a long time, but it's been rebranded re as its own application in Office 365. And, and one of the things that comes with it are our templates. So we're going to, um, through a series of demos, uh, show how easy it is to extend that functionality uh, and so you can see that I'm in Microsoft Teams and I'm adding a new tab uh, in the form of lists. And I will go through the experience of building something uh, out of the box. So I'm using this issue tracker template. We get this really nice experience where we can see real examples of how it looks. Uh, we're given the options to uh, personalize it, if you will, to, to suit our needs or our team's needs. And just like that, out of the box, within a matter of seconds, uh, we have this this uh, this functionality that we can use. And now, as I'm clicking through, I'm trying to find some of the the traditional power user options that you would get in SharePoint or Microsoft Lists, and they don't exist in Teams just yet because we don't have that type of uh, feature parity. Um, what you're seeing me there is do is switch from SharePoint to the List experience. It's one that I like better, and so now. Uh, as we progress through, I just need to take note of the site URL, and I'm going to get in to start adding the function, additional functionality, excuse me, in our list. One of the things that I want to do is to create a folder in one of the document libraries that I'm going to associate that folder back to the list item. Yes, you could attach a, a document to a list item, but it's been my experience that users want to work in the native SharePoint experience without having to open an attachment, download it, update it, uh, re-upload it. So this way, we're going to work natively inside the SharePoint experience. And so when you think of a list, especially with the issue tracker list or any other type of case management situation where we're going to have hundreds, if not thousands of entries in the list, scanning a, a, a document library full of subfolders may not be the easiest way to uh, to locate the information visually. So what we're doing in this case is we're, we're going to just create that simple URL. It'll be system generated. Uh, we'll have a, a, a very uh, user-friendly uh, link that comes back. All of this is very uh, you know basic type of stuff, but we're doing it as new list items are being created. And so as you see, as I'm working through Power Automate, is I, I've set the trigger to say whenever a new item is created, we will go out and take further action. So what you see on the screen right now is that I'm initializing a variable. We're going to call it folder name, and we're going to use some of the dynamic metadata that we get from the Power Automate flow triggering as a new item is created. So in this case, I'm simply concatenating the ID value and the, uh, the title. 
And so every time we come into the list, we'll get this uniquely identified folder name and our users won't have to know or remember where it is because it'll be stored in the list. And so they'll have this lookup functionality. So here we go, uh, out of the box, we can create this SharePoint folder and th there's nothing high tech or fancy about this if you're in Power Automate. The hard part will come when we go to update the list with that URL. Uh, <clears throat> if you've done anything in SharePoint, you, you know that the URLs are usually long, quite unfriendly, and that is the case when Power Automate creates it for you. Yes, you could uh, plug that into your list as uh, that hyperlink value, but it's not going to be the most friendly thing. So uh, you may have noticed that I hard coded the word general into the list, and so that's the general channel in Teams. So I'm just making sure that the path is correct for where I want to do this because I'm working in the con context of Teams. And so I'm going to trigger a test run here. I'll just create a, a new entry. And I'll, I'll do my best to monitor the, uh, the chat window. So feel free to ask questions as we go along and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, so what should have happened is a new row was created and the folder was created and the folder name was based on that metadata. So now I want to take that value out and put it into the list. It's a little harder than you think. You can, you can use the, the update item statement uh, and plug in that lengthy URL, but it's, it's not the nicest looking thing on the screen. So to improve the user experience, we're going to put in a friendly URL name and, and we'll use the var folder name. And so to do that, we have to use a send HTTP request to SharePoint. This is very much like using uh, the graph API for the SharePoint commands. I'm not a developer. Uh, these are things that I had to uh, you know, learn through uh, an iterative approach of banging my head against the keyboard to finally get it to work. There's plenty of examples on the web on how to do this. And truly, if I can figure this out, uh, anyone can do this. So you can see that as I'm setting up the command, I'm, I'm going to my site, I'm doing a post method, which means I'm going to write to it, and I'm using this API command where I need to get the, uh, the list name, that's the get title function or get by title function, and then I'm going to look at the ID of the item that we're passing in. There's some header information, which is pretty standard, and now we do the body, and this is where it gets a bit trickier. All right, so I'm gonna paste in the code. And if you're interested in almost a tutorial, a walkthrough of how this looks, like go to my blog and I have, an, and these are where all of these demos are inspired from by articles that I, I've written that I've used in, in the real world. And so I'm highlighting this, this word, it's, it's issue underscore X 0020 underscore tracker. All right now, and I'm also highlighting the name of the list. So issue space tracker, that's the name of it. But when we look at the URL, we see that it's issue percent 20 tracker, right? So we've got like three different versions of the name going on. And what we need is that internal list name. And this can be pretty tricky to find. So I'm using this crazy command that I found on the web where I do another API call to get the internal name. If you do anything with the Power Platform with lists, you know that there's this, this X underscore zero, 20 thing, whatever that weird number is, the way that it translates spaces. So you have to know what that internal list name is. And you can get it with one of those manual API calls that you can do inside of your web browser. Right, so uh, we know the list we're going against, and that's the issue tracker. The column we're updating is called folder location. We're giving it a description, the var folder name, and that's like the, the vanity part of the URL, the friendly name. And then the URL is the link to the item, which is metadata that comes out of the create new folder task. So we go to the list. And so instead of this lengthy URL, we get this nice little uh, link that takes us to the, uh, the, the document library. So our users, they have this nice experience where they can scan through, find their items, work within the list, work within teams, and not have to go and manually navigate and search for items that are related to this issue. And the plus side is they get to continue to work in that native Teams or SharePoint file experience that they're used to. And that's our first step forward on building the ultimate issue tracker. OK, 
Okay, let's go to the next demo. I feel like I've just done this one. Here we go. Right, so uh, it's great. We use the uh, um, the off the or out of the box uh, issue tracker template. Uh, there's a very good chance that we had existing data, and so or we might have the business need to uh, uh, recurringly bring in data from other like ERP systems or enterprise systems. So let's take existing Excel data and move it into an existing uh, list. But before we do that, we're going to add a couple more columns to add real world functionality to the issue tracker. So one of the big things that we're going to add, and it's so simple, we're adding a due date column. And this will be the anchor for more of the uh, of the work that we do uh, later in the demo. So a due date gives us an anchor point by which we can start basing some of the more value added activities like setting reminders. So uh, dates are important. We have a due date. So why don't we use some conditional formatting? We don't have to use JSON anymore. We can use this very nice uh, wizard to do these if else type statements to determine the types of conditions that we want that will affect the formatting of the, the column. So we're saying if, if any item has a due date that's already passed and the status of the item is open, and that's what you're seeing me do here with the status is new, if it's blocked, if it's in progress, these things denote that they're open to the business users. And once we've set out all of these conditions, they're not complex, but they are, you know, lengthy. So you can do as many rules as you want. Uh, oh, thank you, Ralph. I do love beer and it's almost SharePoint time in my part of the world. And so as we see, as we come past an example due date, it's bold, it's red. And so we have the value now of, of having our users not worry about what's important. We use these visual colors to draw attention to what's important to them. It's not the biggest time saver, but it's enough. These marginal gains is what we're chasing after. These marginal gains will buy them so real time in the long run. So as you see, as I, I change through the status, the due date comes on and off as bold. So all good, love it. So let's get into the point of getting some other data in. Uh, I'm opening up an existing spreadsheet with some existing data. The important thing for you to understand is that the data is formatted in the column type that is expected. So I have to do some due diligence to make sure the data fits. The second part that I have to do is ensure that's formatted as a table. It's not too bad. Once you've done that and you've got, you know, uh, column data type parity, it's going to be pretty straightforward to start moving this in. So we're going to do a, a new flow and this will just be like an, an on-demand thing. So we're going to use a schedule flow. But if you can imagine where a situation where you're taking data out of a, an ERP system and you need to put it into a list for some type of uh, temporary storage or operational transaction processing, you can do it this way. So a list in a SharePoint site, run our flow against it on a regular basis and just keep pumping in that data into the list that we need. All right, so again, I have to grab the uh, the, the the SharePoint site name uh, because that's where the, uh, uh, the file is located for Excel. So um, I'm drilling into documents and now I'll go into uh, my general folder and I'll find my issue tracker Excel spreadsheet. I'll tell it to find the data that's in the table that we formatted and we've ensured that um, the data is is formatted properly. If you start doing, uh, you know, if you if you have garbage data going in, you're going to get uh, garbage data coming out and that's going to be problematic as we go through. Uh, so one of the things that we have to do is Excel stores dates differently uh, than SharePoint does. So we're going to have to take a moment to uh, uh, handle those dates and we'll do it by uh, dynamically changing things with a variable as we're doing that uh, import loop as we go through the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm creating a uh, variable, we we'll call it the var date reported. I'll create another one because I have another date column in the list, and this will be the var due date. And I'm just calling them, uh, um, or are, are, are making them uh, strings, uh, and so I can manipulate the values later. Uh, excuse me. So now I'm coming into a loop, and we'll use the output from the listing the rows of the Excel spreadsheet table. Here we go. Value.
And now we will uh, set those values and we have to use this weird formula. Um, I believe it's ticks. Uh, you will see it in a second. And again, it's not nothing I created. It's just the power of community using the the power eight power automate community to uh, um, learn how to do some of this stuff. And I'm sure all of you can relate to that. So uh, in the case of these two deep variables, I, I'm assigning them May the, the values from the Excel spreadsheet. And then when I go to create a new item inside of the list, we will do this, this expression that uh, will convert that Excel date into a date that SharePoint can use. So I'm adding another action, SharePoint uh, teams lists. When we're, we're dealing with files and list data, we always have to use the, uh, the, uh, the, the SharePoint actions. Uh, so I'll paste in my site name and I'll target my issue tracker list. Uh, it will dynamically read all the columns. Uh, you'll notice that some columns have uh, an asterisk that denotes that they're required. So we're always having to uh, paste those values in. You'll probably also notice that uh, status has that default value of new. Uh, and if you're not careful of that, uh, it will always overwrite your uh, your intended value to new or if through an update uh, or a uh, uh, an insert new it'll always take that default value so you always have to override that so all i'm doing at this point is doing that one for one matchup of the columns in excel to what we have in the list so now this is where it gets a bit harder and we have to use a uh, power automate expression so at this point uh, i'm doing an add days function and i uh, i go to uh uh, the year 1899, December 30th. No idea why that came up. There's probably smarter people on the call that can answer that for me. Yes, uh, uh, I know Ralph, but it's not code when you copy it from uh, Google. So uh, I can't code to save my life, but I can do some of this stuff through trial and error. Um, and so now I'm, I'm converting my variable into an int and then I will uh, uh, format it into uh, into a, a more a date format that's uh, more conducive to uh, the format that I expect. And so uh, it's all looking good now. No errors. Double check. Double check. Add that. And I'm going to do the same treatment, but for the due date column. Again, add days, uh, 1899, December 30th. Coincidentally, that's. Uh, the month and date of my birthday. One of the worst days of the year to have a birthday as a child coming so soon after Christmas and so close to New Year's Eve. And here we go. So we should be able to just punch that in, fill in the last column, and then we run it. It's not the fastest execution. You know, it could take like minutes depending on, on how much data you have to put in, but it sure beats having someone to, to type it in uh, manually, especially considering is that someone must have put it in initially in inside of the Excel in one form or another. So we see that there's there's no entries in my table or in my list except for my default view. I run this. Um, that will be a t-shirt. It's not code if you copy and paste. <laughs> that could be a t-shirt. Takes a bit to run. I think we had like maybe 20, 30 rows, if that, in that spreadsheet. So you could see that um, this is not the fastest operation. You don't want to use this for, uh, you know, high velocity transaction type processing. But here we go. We get all our data. And it's and so when we have this data, um, you see the value of using that uh, out of the box list template that we are now extending. It's got column formatting baked in. It's got a calculated column working for us. It has things laid out so I don't have to reinvent the wheel to think about what attributes I would need in a list to manage issues. And, and it's not just the issue tracker that exists inside of lists as a template. There's many more that are worth considering. You'll also notice that the folder location uh, populated. So as one flow was creating new entries or new items, the other flow was uh, executing to do that folder location business. So if we went into the file system, we'd see all of those folders created. So at scale, this is so valuable. And I use this in the real world at my previous employer where they were doing case management out of a SharePoint list and every case had you know, 
potentially uh, half a dozen to a dozen documents and finding uh, a concise way to, to always navigate those files. A simple link was the way to do it. So here we go. Awesome. So I'd mentioned that there was a, uh, um, a calculated column and it, it's called days old and you can see it here. It's all of that, that bolded text. And what it's doing is it's looking at um, uh, the date that the issue was reported to the current date. And it's saying, you know, simple math, uh, how long has this happened? But because it's a calculated column, it doesn't know that uh, the issue may have been closed. Uh, so if the issue is completed, why are we continuing to track the dates? So it, it's, it's not like a real world view of things. So uh, in this case, we're going to create a new column and it will be a replacement to that calculated column. And that calculated column is a very good step forward but I think it skews uh, people's understanding of an issue if that days old or time to completion uh, continues to grow. So we'll do a new column. It's just a basic integer column and we will uh, use Power Automate to do that calculation for us, but the calculation will be smart enough to stop when the, uh, the status has uh, changed to a value that says it's no longer open to us. And there's a few different values. So we understand the business process and we reflect it into the flow. And again, we go back to this thing where we, we didn't, we're not going to make a massive improvement in a user's experience, but we just turned that knob one more click over. So we've done, you know, one click, we created the list uh, using a template, another click by doing it in Teams, another click by doing the, uh, the folder location. And we're going to continue to do that not to keep building upon this simple list, but to add value to our users' experience. And hopefully, you know, at the end of the year, maybe they're saving 5%, maybe 10% of their time when they're working on this business process. Of course, part of all of these demos that I'm doing is to showcase how Power Automate, because we're talking about data in a list, can be really used in conjunction with Teams, lists uh, and power automate to make you know a, a platform for people who uh, maybe aren't uh, developers uh, maybe people who are, are beyond just the uh, uh, the people that will use excel for all of their solutions and something like this there's not a lot of technical debt in anything we're doing there's hardly going to be any code outside of the uh, uh, that one cut and paste that i did in the uh, uh, that, that send HTTP request. Everything else here is, is pretty standard. There's there's hardly any technical debt with what we're doing, and so so long as Microsoft doesn't deprecate one of these these actions inside of Flow or uh, you know get rid of lists or teams, which is it's kind of inconceivable to think of. We should be fine. And so whatever investments we make into this type of solutioning, um, they carry forward. And I'm not suggesting for one second that this is enterprise grade stuff. This is not what we're targeting. We're targeting people who uh, kind of sit outside of the realm of the, the ERPs and the, the enterprise applications, the ones who can still get value out of IT and, and the automation of mundane tasks. But um, this is for them. These are these 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 configure configurable solutions that we, we hope to bring uh, uh, lots of value to our, our users. So uh, I've gone through this business of, of looking at uh, of uh, getting the items um, from the list. Uh, I'm using a, a new uh, date variable uh, that I'm going to 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 use uh, in my new calculation and then I'm going to update uh, our list uh, as we go through. And so uh, again, pointing to our site, pointing to the list, uh, I'm getting the ID from the get item. So think about what we're doing. We're reading the list and then we're going to loop through each one um, and set the date for it. And in, in the previous demo, I thought I was using this ticks function, but it is here and it is. It's something else. And uh, I'm, I'm quite grateful for. Uh, for people on Google who put that in. So here's here it is. I'm doing a div command, uh, calling the sub function. I'm doing this ticks business. Uh, I've got uh, all of this stuff, and I swear I, I didn't do any of this stuff. It, it's basically adding time to that uh, uh, that that SharePoint date, and uh, it will it will do the date calculation based on that time. So we test, take a look. We see days old, new is empty. We'll run this flow. We'll click done. 
and this is a this is a, a job that we're setting to run daily and so we'll have a number of jobs that uh, that go daily so as we look at the list we only see the, the the days old new calculation for items that are open the ones that are blank they've already been closed out so they wouldn't have that calculated so if we were to implement this at the point of importing all of our data those calculations would just stop there so each day the 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 process runs it does the evaluation on the days old and it knows to stop because the conditions are no longer met and so that's one way of doing this new calculation that will give uh, the users of the issue tracker uh, insights into you know the the age of the issues or the to the the time of completion all right so here's one that uh, was born out of that same uh, example at my previous employer where we're using case information and uh, what I mean by that exactly is they were taking something that was going from uh, a short term state into a long term state uh, and it needed to be vacated out of that short term area because the business process is no longer aligned and it had different outcomes. So to that end, we would copy it from one list to another list. And so for the purposes of this, we'll just create a duplicate list. We'll call it an archive. And in this case, we'll just say we'll pick a list item will click a button for whatever the justification is on the business side maybe it's a duplicate and we'll send it over to our new list and there it will sit it's out of the the current workload but it hasn't been completely deleted so my uh, power automate has this uh, concept of a a button flow and uh, um, you, you see it on the first entry there it's called manually trigger a flow and it you know it, it's it's likened to pressing a button and something happens. Uh, and so we will do uh, uh, in SharePoint, we'll say for uh, for a selected item, you know, and essentially you're pressing the button at that point and it will run the command that we tell it to do. So in this case, uh, we'll say if anyone does something for that selected item in our base list, the issue tracker. And you'll see that I, I tend to do a lot of renaming of the actions just to save me from myself. So in this case, I'm simply calling one source and I'll call the next one destination. And I'll do a, a get item. And so when the user initiates this flow, it only gets a couple pieces of the metadata, like the ID and maybe the title. It doesn't get the full breadth of everything inside of the, of the row. So we need to do another command to go out and go get all of that information. And so I do a second call back to the source list uh, to get all of the, those uh, bits of uh, information from the remaining columns. And now I will do a third SharePoint action, and this time we'll create an item, but now we're targeting the destination list. So more renaming. It, it's, very, it's very easy to uh, accidentally use the output from um, uh, uh, similar or the same uh, duplicate actions that you might have in your flow. So for example, if you're doing two get items in a flow, um, they're both going to look the same unless you rename them in a way that makes sense. So uh, me taking the time to, to do this is simply just to, to save me for myself so I don't inevitably cross wires on, uh, on what I'm um, uh, intending to do with the, the data that was uh, uh, done in a, a previous step. So I'm just going through and it, it's again, it's a, a, a one for one lineup of the, the columns. Uh, at this point, if, if the list differed, you could add uh, other expressions or, or leave data out or, or do things to, to change the state, change the form of uh, list information or uh, item information in one list as you move it over to the other. And so here we go, uh, last column. Get the email. We should be able to do a save and test. And our test has to be manually initiated, so we'll go to our source list. Right, and now I have to clean up my item, so I'm going to delete out of source. Again, uh, I recognize that it's Friday. It's uh, 6.30 p.m. my time. Um, 
really appreciate all of you uh, taking time to sit in to see this, and, and I hope that uh, um, you can see that there, there's quite a bit of functionality that can be extended using uh, Power Automate when it comes to uh, Microsoft Lists. And so this is where we uh, um, we created that uh, that flow that's for the selected item. And when I select, selected the Automate menu button, it took a second, but it showed up after it, it read. I had permissions to it, and it made that flow uh, available to me. So I can, you know, click that virtual button, if you will, and we can see that it has now moved over. And if I do a refresh, the entry is gone. So, you know, kind of like a, a, a copy and paste between uh, list items uh, or lists, excuse me. And it's one that uh, served my previous employer well, and uh, it's one that uh, I showcased on my blog. And it, uh, I guess I was kind of surprised to know that it, it it got a lot of uh, positive feedback because people thought it was useful. So this one's neat. This one's a, a bit of a short demo, but it, it showcases some of the, the out of the box experiences and opportunities we have to uh, change the experience. Now this, this form experience inside of modern SharePoint and Microsoft List is pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to make changes in it like a year and a half ago, we'd be going into Power Apps, which is, it's not the same experience. It does take a bit of, uh, of know-how to do, but with this updated experience, I can drag stuff around. I can reorder it however I want. Um, I can deselect items so they're not uh, visible to the users. And there's a few other options in there, like uh, conditional logic as to whether to show an item or not. So it looks pretty good there, and you can customize it. And again, there's no technical debt there. But there's another option that came out uh, earlier in the year, and we can apply the JSON formatting and configure these layouts to be pretty slick looking. And again, I I can't code to save my life, but what I can do is reference samples uh, that community members or Microsoft have put together. So I'm using this sample that's on docs.microsoft.com and I'm going to apply it here and customize it to my own needs. Um, so, you know, this is this JSON stuff. I mean, I think I can follow what it's doing, but dang it, I, I would be uh, hard pressed to have to write one of those from, uh, um, from scratch. And so uh, by simply viewing through the text, I can see, you know, it, it showed it as contact details, but I'm not talking about contacts, I'm talking about issues. So that was an easy thing for me to change. Now we have this icon and it's, it's a group of people like that doesn't speak to the issue thing. So I know that Microsoft uses Microsoft icon. So you can look up what all the different icons are. And I find out that there's an issue tracking icon and it, it looks perfect. So here we go. And just like that, we're able to add. Friday, you would. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Ralph, for thanking them because it. I get it. Last sessions are always tough. And so now that we've added this nice header, and now we're trying to, you know, we're, 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 we're personalizing the experience for our users. And that we've taken these sections in the next part of that Microsoft Docs area, and I'm going to pull it out, and I'm just going to rearrange things around to a way that makes more sense to my users. We have a, a detail section, we have a, a state section, dates, and it, it's much easier for them uh, to uh, uh, consume this information. and. This was not hard for me to do. And uh, Ralph, you're absolutely right. This is this is out of the box. I mean, yes, there were some JSON in there, but I didn't write it. And I know that if I can do it, anyone else on this call can do it as well. So now we're getting to this point where it's not just a basic form and a list. We're, we're coming around to making a legit solution here. Now, here's the big one. This is the one, this is where we get the value. This is where we bring so much value to our users in anything that we do. If we have something that is, uh, thank you, Joseph, I appreciate that. If we have something that is uh, impacted by a date, a due date, an end date, giving our users the opportunity to intervene is one of the most valuable things that we can do, a reminder. 
a reminder in the context of Teams will be so valuable to our users because this is where they're working. So let's go through this next demo and show how we can use that due date that we created, and that will be the anchor point for this reminder. And we'll say, you know, any issue that's due in 30 days, let's take action. So we're going to use the existing uh, uh, daily run flow that we created, and we're going to uh, create a couple of variables. And the first variable, putting it on the screen now. And so these are the number of days that uh, we are going to remind our users from. And this could be anything that makes sense to the business. I'm not hard coding it. So right now it's just gonna be like a static 30 days. I can change that in the flow at any point. And now I'm going to uh, figure out dynamically when is 30 days from the point when this flow runs. Here we go, we have our reminder date. So I've got two dates, the, how many days in, we're going to remind to and then what the actual date is. All right, so let's do our Power Automate expressions. Uh, we're going to add days. UTC now, that's if you're a SQL Server person, that's like a get date function. We're going to put in the, the number of days that are from the, the num days reminder thing, and we're going to format it. That wasn't that hard to do, but, you know, first try might take a bit of work. Um, for sure, check out my blog. I use that, uh, that expression repeatedly because I do find that a lot of the solutions I encountered in the real world, value comes from giving people uh, opportunities to intervene, and I, I use it uh, repeatedly. So I have my date. Now I'm going to um, jump over to my list to make sure that I have a date that we can test from. And so we'll update this. And when this experience is in, in lists and teams, like it looks great. You're using up more of that screen real estate, and we are tend to have a bit more screen real estate than we once did. So now that we've got a, a test item mocked up and ready to go, I'll go back in and I will do another uh, SharePoint action, and I'm getting a, a second get items action. So you notice higher up on the screen, we did a get items to calculate the days old. Now we're going to do a similar action, but this time we're looking for items that fall within that reminder date window. All this mundane stuff, pointing it to the site, pointing it to the list, but here's the here's the part that's a bit different. We have to do this filter query and it uses the OData commands. And so I'm saying uh, the due date is equal to, and those are two, sing those are single quotes. And then I'll put in my var reminder date and I'll say the status is not equal to completed and I'll continue that on. And basically what I'm, I'm saying is I, I only want issues that are open. Don't remind me about stuff that's closed. So let's make sure it's targeted. I'm not wasting people's times. This gets complicated, so I need to make sure I'm getting uh, results out. So here's how my function reads. Gobbledygook data doesn't mean anything to you or me, but it shows that I've got data. It is actually all of the row item information, and that's how it spits it out. But it's confirmation to me that I'm okay to move to my next step. My next step is to create a loop. And inside that loop, which is going to be uh, based on all of the, the items that we may have pulled out of the list, is to start sending those update messages to our users. Uh, you're in Teams right now, I'm in Teams right now. We have all these different ways, believe it or not, of communicating in Teams. We can, we can chat one-on-one -on -one together, we can have a group chat, we can do a channel conversation, and we have all of these other types of options inside of Teams. So we're gonna start small here and uh, we're just going to uh, post a message to the person who's responsible, letting them know that, hey, this thing is coming due in 30 days. Get off your tushy and get it fixed. So we'll post it as the flow bot. So the, the chat head, if you will, and the team's chat window will say uh, power automator flow or something like that. Um, we'll dynamically grab who the recipient is. And so I'll just search for all the email columns. And this is where renaming uh, comes in very valuable. You see, had two get items, so I know I'm going with the reminders one. Um, and now I'll put in the message. So, okay, uh, I said I wasn't doing any code. This is HTML code to make it look uh, a little nicer on the screen. Um, some might say that, you know, HTML programmer is a bit of an oxymoron. I don't know too much about that stuff, but that's what my coder friends tell me. And so what I've done here is say, hey, issue tracker reminder bold, here's a link to the item with that friendly URL. I don't want to 
spam their screen with uh, um, lots of uh, lengthy strings or whatnot. And so there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying it's due in 30 days. I'll give it a save. Let's give it a test and see how the team's experience looks. And this is like the most basic way of communicating our message in a in a refined way to our users. And so my user gets a, a, a Power Automate chat notification and it simply reads, you have a reminder, it's due in 30 days and you have that link over to the item. It's very dynamic. And so it didn't look like much to the user, but it could be immensely powerful if they were working to critical deadlines. But there's so much more that we can do here. And so what I'm going to do is look towards an adaptive card. An adaptive cards, uh, I thought had a very steep learning curve, but I'm finding that they're not so steep. Microsoft is uh, giving us some tools in, and I'm showing it now called the adaptive cards uh, .io designer website with these samples and these like the code behind these samples is complicated. There's no way I could write any of this JSON code that you're seeing, but what I am totally capable of doing is getting a sample, removing elements that I don't need for my use case and using that as the basis for something to build upon. So I, you saw what I did there. I deleted a couple lines in an image, and now I'm taking this action, and I'm, I'm mimicking some of the, the, the functionality that I'm doing in the previous action where I was sending that simple chat message. I'm sending it to a user. It's coming through as the chatbot, and now I paste in this adaptive card, like, give me a break. Like, I would never be able to write that. I wouldn't expect most users to be able to write that. But I can go through that. I can find the areas that uh, need to be replaced. I can put in the values that need to get changed. And I'm doing that right now. So um, we can see I, I've given it a, a text subject, the issue check a reminder. I'm putting in the dynamic data for the title. I'm using variables for the, the number of days that it's going to come due in. I'm putting the issue description, so now I can bring a bit more metadata to the equation, and, more, and I'm giving them uh, uh, that that link back. I, I promise you, I did not do anything high tech with this. It's literally a copy paste operation out of someone else's uh, hard work uh, that I'm able to extend and use in my own my own ways, and I, I hope that you've. You've thought about using adaptive cards. Uh, you've probably interacted with them, and I, I think that there's just so much potential uh, in, in bringing uh, work, actionable items of work to the user experience. So, like, look at that. It's just a simple reminder, but it it looks elegant on the screen. It functions well. I can hop over into uh, uh, my item and take action. It's a uh, it's a real elegant way of of creating actionable actionable bringing actionable information excuse me to the users in the the same area that they're working in through microsoft teams so really cool stuff and uh, if you're doing any work in power automate and you are interested uh, in uh, in adaptive cards inside of teams or, or the other platforms that they support you do have the the designer site that i showed uh, in the demo but also if you turn on the preview features in power automate there's a designer built into the new preview uh, that is is worth looking into, but there's there's some you know there's change, uh, and and me as a, uh, maybe I'm getting too old for uh, uh, for some of this technology change. I haven't quite adapted those new features. So, what did we do? We took that awesome Microsoft list issue tracker template. And we extended the functionality by bringing it into Microsoft Teams as a tab. Doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But what we've done is we're centralizing work in the area where our users are spending their time. It makes sense to have it there. We used Power Automate to start creating folders inside of the, the Teams file section to line up with those, those issue items. So they have the ability to, to work in those files in that, uh, that very rich uh, Office Web Act 
experience without having to go through the, the friction of attaching and downloading and re-uploading attachment files. They had that very convenient URL link to, to click to. They don't have to navigate and find things. We're, we're trying to make this experience frictionless. Uh, we were able to bring in uh, existing data. Uh, whatever the, the justification for that is, it is it's totally possible with Power Automate into an existing list. Um, whether it's uh, a transactional processing or an initial load, that's available to you. Uh, we, we started uh, adding columns like the due date to uh, add some real world functionality or real world uh, requirements to, to start giving us a, a point to work to and, a, and, and that anchor point that I, I keep uh, calling it to start hanging other functionality on like the reminders. Um, we have the ability to move items from one list to another. Perhaps the state of them has changed. And like I said, they go from this long short term state to a long term state and they need to be cleared out without being deleted for either posterity sake through an archive or you know to for that long term uh, state uh, processing um, we updated that form experience we used uh, the out of the box drag and drop type of functionality zero technical debt uh, all configuration we looked at some of these these more configurable uh, header body footer options that are now available. Uh, again, JSON, I don't write it, I copy it, I customize it to suit my users' needs to try and make a more usable experience. Some of these lists, you know, dozens of columns wide, that's fine, that's what the business process requires, but I section it out in a way that the users can consume it and it's not as overwhelming on the screen to them. And it translates well between the SharePoint experience, the list experience and the Teams experience. We looked at reminders, you know, we, we dynamically build this this reminder system in, you know, we take it for granted every time we get a, a meeting notice reminder, but that meeting notice reminder is so important because it keeps us on time, keeps us on schedule. And that's the importance of having reminder dates for issues or any other item that you're working towards. It sounds very common sense when you say it out loud, but the issue tracker doesn't really provide that in the out of the box experience. Um, we looked at adaptive cards, and I, I think that uh, uh, we're really seeing the, uh, you know, the, the user experience of the future coming through actionable cards where you don't even know what application you're looking at anymore. It's just information, action, information, action, and that's probably how a lot of us are going to be consuming information going forward. So all of that in less than 50 minutes, I, I'm not a developer. I do like uh, SharePoint, I do like lists and Power Automate. Um, I guess it can have a, a learning curve, but it's well supported, it's well documented. So I really don't think that we've incurred any significant technical debt in anything we've done. Um, there's a very good chance that this will all carry forward. And so uh, taking that um, out of the box uh, list experience and putting it in teams or, or hub for teamwork and uh, extending the crap out of it using the uh, power automate and other functionality inside of lists and sharepoint we built ourselves a pretty cool solution so it's friday and it is 10 minutes to go if you have any questions i'm so happy to uh, to try and answer them uh, i will say and this isn't just a plug um, all of these things that i've demoed I've wrote about in some form or fashion on my blog, and um, they can serve as a good tutorial or, or as a good starting point because I, I, I pride myself on making them uh, like a walkthrough experience. And because I'm always referencing things like the issue tracker, you should have those, those assets at your disposal as well. But again, thank you so much. No questions, that's cool. Oh, sorry. But whoever's out there, there can start talking. Start talking. Uh, if you can, if you want to talk, and this is your chance because I have the power to give you power. Uh, I can make you a presenter. You can share your thoughts. Unless you just want to uh, talk to Norm on, your, on the blog, that's OK, too. And uh, just, yeah, so when you go to his blog, don't forget to click on that, uh, that image link that I pasted over there on the top. <laughs> 
Did you put that in there? Okay. Oh, just sure. a reminder. Yeah, you're wondering who did that. Well, who else would be thinking of that? Except the per- <laughs> person drinking a little bit of uh, <clears throat> bourbon right now. Yep. Yes, yeah, so share pie. Share pie. Yes. Yeah, oh, share pie. You know what?